Hello, this is Kristen at Servant Tech, and in this tutorial video, we're going to take a look at how to embed um, a, an email newsletter sign up from MailChimp. So, if you're using MailChimp to send out mass emails, um, you know that you can log in to MailChimp's interface and set up some lists for your subscribers. You can set up campaigns, templates. Um, what we're going to look at today is setting up um, on the home page a form like this down here that says get our updates. Um, we are asking for a first name, a last name, an email, and um, we've got a subscribe button. So the first thing that you'll want to do is log into MailChimp and you will go to your lists. And once you see your lists, uh, you can click on the one that you want to create a subscription box for. So I'll click on our list called monthly newsletter. And um, as of right now, we don't have any subscribers, but what we want to do is create a sign up form to get subscribers. So we're going to click on sign up forms. And we want an embedded form. And you'll see that the default form that's created over here is has an email address. It asks for the first name and the last name. And the email address on this form is required. So um, we can also add um, a title that we want to include in our form. Um, we can also uh, show interest group fields, um, required field indicators. Um, all of this can be set up on the left hand side and then you'll see your code appear on the right hand side. So what we've done is we've gone ahead and copied this code as it is. Um, you can just cut and paste this and we will go into the back end of our website and we're going to create a new module. So we're going to go into the extensions module manager. And once we arrive here, we're going to um, set up a new module. And this is going to be a custom HTML module because that's exactly what we have. It's a custom HTML code that we're going to paste into our website. So for right now, I'm going to call this newsletter subscription and one thing that you'll need to do is you're not going to paste the code right directly into the text editor you're going to click on your source code icon which will give you a text box which is specifically for HTML code so we're going to paste our code that we got from MailChimp into the source code box and you'll see that once you click OK, you see the subscribe box actually appear um, back here. And I'm going to close this out. And I'm actually going to delete these extra returns here. Actually, um, what that did is it changed the subscribe heading, subscribe to our mailing list heading to a paragraph. But you know what, we're not going to worry about that right now because we are actually going to go in and make some changes to this code in order to get the styling to look the way we want it to look on our website. So I'm just going to say OK for now. And um, I'm going to need to check the position in the module that we already have set up. So for now, I'm just going to leave this blank. I'm going to hide the title because I don't really want the newsletter subscription to be the title. I want um, the subscribe to our mailing list to be the title. So um, the next step that we'll need to do is choose which menu item we want it to appear on. Um, we don't want this on all pages just yet. For now, we're just going to set it on the home page. So um, we're going to choose only on the pages selected. And we're going to initially select none. And then we're just going to come down and select home. And 
We are also going to use one of our um, built-in styles with our template. So we're just going to type in the name of that style in the module class suffix. In this case, our module class suffix is outline2. Um, you'll see it has a little hyphen before it. Um, depending on what template club you're using and um, what template options you have, um, those would be predetermined by the template, which a lot of times you can see by looking at the demo. Um, if we were to look at the home page of our website, you'll see that our Get Our Updates box has a, um, a thin gold line around it, and that's what the Outline 2 style will do for our sign-up form. So I'm just going to save this for now, and I'm actually going to close it, and let's take a look at the box that I have already created um, using the MailChimp sign-up form, and that I've called subscribe to our newsletter. So um, you'll notice that this form looks a little bit different than our form in the text editor. And again, that's because I have um, added some specific styles within the HTML code. So um, what I wanted to check here, and you can actually check without even opening the module itself, but um, we want to see what position we need to put this in. So in our particular template, the position is top row one, so I'm just going to close out of this because we don't need to make any changes. And let's go back to our newsletter subscription, which doesn't yet have a position. You see we've left that as none. So we'll go back to our new one. And we're going to choose the subscription. And you can start typing it in. Um, to see it appear, we want top row one, three. And we'll now save and close this. And now it will be in the top row one, three position on our home page, but we want to turn off our old one. So I'm going to show you what it looks like straight out of MailChimp without making any uh, changes to the HTML code. So let's click on the home page and refresh it. And you'll see there's definitely some styling changes we're going to want to make in order to make the form better fit in the area we have available um, and just kind of make it look a little bit nicer. So the way that we'll do this is we will go back to the uh, admin panel. And the next thing we'll need to do is open up our module. So we'll go down to the newsletter subscription module. And the first thing we're going to want to do is open the source code editor. And we're going to want to remove this, these extra paragraph tags up here because it's leaving um, a lot of space above our form. But what we can actually do is put the heading right here. So instead of this um, subscribe to our mailing list right here, we can remove it and we can put the heading up here. And I'm going to use an H3 uh, heading with some... Um, some extra styles applied to it. So we're going to say the style oops, should be a margin of 10. This is going to be the top, the right, the left, and the bottom margin. That's what these numbers signify. And then we're going to do a text align to align the uh, heading to the center. And then we'll add our actual heading that we want. I'm going to change this to get our updates. 
and I'm going to close that H3 tag. Okay, um, so now we've got our heading, we have it centered, we've adjusted the margins so that it appears correctly, um, and next we have the embed code, the rest of the embed code, and one change that I decided to make is I wanted the first name and the last name to appear above the email address. So I'm going to cut these um, from the email address field and I'm going to add it to just above the div that holds the email field. So now we've got first name, last name, and the email address below that. Um, now one thing that we needed to do was um, add some styling that would um, adjust the height of these fields because our box is not that tall, not as tall as it is right now. Um, so I'm just going to paste in some code that I use to create these styles. So um, right next to the input ID for the first name, Uh, we've got a class which we're not using, but we can put our styles right in here. So I'm going to paste in the style that we want to use, which um, gives the box a height, a width, and a font size. And I'm also going to use the same one for the last name field. So we'll go right into uh, the same place in the last name field and paste that same code in. And then we are going to do the same thing for the email field. So we'll go down to the email field, paste in the new style. And we're also going to want to take out the labels and instead use placeholder text for each of these. So you'll see that um, the first name field has a label that says first name and that is what appears right here above the first name box. So instead of it appearing above the box and taking up that extra space, we want it to appear inside the text box. So um, let's just remove the label altogether. We're going to delete that and in the input ID area, um, we're going to add something that's called a placeholder and we're going to, um, we can put that right after value. Um, and this is going to appear inside of the box now. So we'll do the same for the last name. We'll add a placeholder that says last name. And again for the email. Okay, so one thing that we need to go back and do now is also replace the label for the last name and the label for the email. And you'll notice with the email, since we have the asterisk for the um, required, we're just going to take all that out and we can put our own asterisk right here in the placeholder. We've included it right after the word email. Okay, so let's take a look at these changes first. So we'll say okay, and we'll save it. We're going to refresh the home page. And here we have some um, initial edits to the form. One thing that I also did when I um, was going through this the first time was I removed this indicates required 
Um, you can keep it. Uh, it is helpful for users. Um, a lot of people do recognize the asterisk and they'll be notified um, with a validation message if they don't fill out the email field. So I chose to get rid of that in ours. So the last two steps we're going to take are removing the indicates require text and we're also going to make the subscribe box a little bit wider. So let's go back and go back to the source code. So the styles that I chose to add to the submit button or subscribe button um, will go right in the um, input tag. So I'm just going to paste these in and you'll see that we gave it a width of 100%. Um, I changed the font size to be a little bit larger than those inside the fields. Um, I also gave the font weight uh, 900, which is actually bold, and I changed the value to all caps. Um, this is just the way that I wanted to style it. You can um, make other changes to your own. And then the last step would be removing the indicates required div. Um, I just didn't want to use up that space um, for that text, so I'm going to delete that and say OK, and save it. Let's take a look at how it looks on the home page. All right, so here's our home page. We're going to refresh it. And we now have our MailChimp sign-up form styled the way that we want to style it so it matches the look of our website. So thanks for joining for this tutorial. I hope you uh, are able to do the same on your website and make the customizations. Um, even if you're not that familiar with CSS, you might be able to see um, some of the examples in our own in our own code by pausing the video at different points. Um, but CSS is hugely powerful for working with Joomla. So if you have even a basic understanding of how to make styling edits, you'll be able to go a long way with Joomla. So again, thanks for joining, and we look forward to sharing more with you next time.